Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys, trader and technical analyst for the last 13 years. In this video, we're going to check in on the broader markets and the cannabis sector putting on an absolute show with some of the weaker fundamental names with a short squeeze going 60, 80% plus on the day. We've got the Tesla bulls putting a little mini short squeeze on as well with a gap up open trapping some bears. NVDA relative weakness continues and a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's check it out. So we've got the spy bulls continuing the daily bounce. We're still keeping an eye out for anything under 453.67 to be a daily lower high, but a pretty decent bounce at this point. We've got the CPI numbers on Wednesday, and the bulls are just hoping to create space where it's going to be difficult for the bears to confirm a daily downtrend. If we see this bounce continue a bit further, we're going to create the space where even if we do fail resistance, still possible to pull back and hold support to maintain the daily uptrend. We're not going to forget we are still in a daily uptrend at this point, and the burden is on bears to change that. If that does not change, we're going to continue watching for cup and handles on the monthly time frame. The burden's on bears to confirm a daily downtrend and then a weekly downtrend if we're going to see a longer-term momentum shift. The NASDAQ led the way for the bulls, same deal. Daily uptrend remains intact. Higher low is set. Are we going to set a lower high compared to 380.83? Entirely possible, but no sign of it at the moment. Bulls kept control. We had some morning weakness. We shaped up a five-minute inverse head and shoulders, knowing an hourly higher low was the most likely scenario, and the bulls took over from there. Hourly uptrends are our guides as we keep an eye out for the possibility of daily lower highs. As long as the hourly uptrend is intact, no daily lower high is taking shape. And again, for the people that are laughing about the cup and handle on the monthly, maybe, but... This is a monthly bull flag, unless the bears prove to us that it is not a monthly bull flag. And that's what we're watching for over the next handful of days. So cannabis names putting on an absolute show. And again, it's, it's some of the fundamentally weaker names. It's the names that got trashed the most. So CGC went from 56.50 all time high down to 33 cents, 34 cents. And now we're up 350, 400% off of our lows. And today we gapped up and ran 80% plus, 90% at one point on the day. And after hours, we had an initial little dip here, and now the bull's trying to make it back towards the high of the day. They're going to try and gap up open tomorrow. We'll see if they can do it. How do we know the difference between a gap up for selling and a gap up that runs? Well, in one instance, when the entire sector is gapping up together, that makes it more likely that the gap up is going to lead to consolidation. But also, it's in the first five-minute candle. If you set the, if you gap up, and set the low of the day in the first five minute candle right away. Obviously, if you don't break that level, we're not gonna see any more downside. So we set that low right out of the gate and then never revisited that level and the bulls just kept control for the rest of the day from there. So this is absolutely a short squeeze. And the question then becomes, how high can we go? I don't know, but we're gonna look for key levels 179. Then we're looking up towards Really, you know, two psychological is the next major level that stands out. But one thing that I am watching for is the possibility that CGC and the other one is ACB. And again, the weakest of the week, fundamentally speaking, this name went from 100, it's had reverse splits, 150, and then after reverse splits, down to 43 cents, 99.9% .9 drop. And then today, out of nowhere, well, not out of nowhere, because we know the news, but didn't do anything while everything else is running, and then suddenly today, and they had news, you know, they rebought $12 million worth of, worth of convertible debt. That's nice. It's, it's not really moving the needle fundamentally, but it's enough to see a short squeeze, and we go up 74%. And you look at the volume. Shares traded $250 million. I mean, we've never come close to that dollar or that share count of volume ever in the history of this name. So... Bulls are jumping on that short squeeze opportunity, and it's a potential dash to trash. What's a dash to trash? It happens in crypto. It happens in stocks. It's when you get a strong market, and you have the lead sectors leading the way, and then the laggard sectors go on a bounce, and then the weakest of the weak, the things that have not participated at all, they bounce last, and then that marks the top for the sector. And so could that be the case here? I'm watching for it. If CGC and ACB both top out on the same day, I'm going to be very closely watching what's MSOS and TLRY doing 
Are they responding to the profit taking that's taking place? And it's nice when gains like this happen. Again, even if you know you're only long MSOS and you look at this and say, oh, what the heck? People are making gains and I picked the wrong name. It's a good thing because it brings headlines, it brings attention, it brings buzz and momentum, and it brings profits. Profits rotate around the sector. There are some longs out there that are going to take some of these profits in ACB and you know TLR or ACB and, and CGC and buy the next consolidation that they see in MSOS. So that's a benefit, but it can be frustrating if you know you're not in these names. And again, fundamentals are out the window right now as far as why are these moves happening? This is just a short squeeze that bulls are jumping on top of. And you could see that, you know, Wall Street bets over the weekend, some of the highest talked about tickers were all cannabis. And this is something I've been doing for 13 years trading this sector. 10 years ago, I was on iHub counting the number of messages that a stock ticker would have over the weekend to gauge what the probability of a gap up on Monday would be. And it's the same thing with Wall Street bets. And, you know, this isn't only Wall Street bets money. This is hedge funds and major players who use that as an indicator and say, okay, well, Wall Street bets is all over this. So let's get all over it as well. So now we're going to be looking at supports established on the way up, which is not many, but you can look at the 15 minute time frame and see CGC has a support at 81 cents to be watching. We're going to be looking for an hourly higher low to be the result of consolidation. If we gap up tomorrow, we're going to look for a gap up into hourly consolidation. We're going to look for an hourly higher low to be the result of that consolidation. And same thing for, uh, that, that's ACB support. CGC, 15 minute time frame. Support 156, 137. So for those that, you know, how do, how do I enter at this point? I don't want to chase. Let's go to MSOS. So MSOS, decent day, you know, breaking the double top from Friday at 9.07. Not a, you know, a 10% day is nice, but it's not an 80% day, but um, keeping control. So I added today and it didn't end up working out. I stopped out break even, but uh, how do I enter? I don't want to be chasing. I don't want to buy the top. You wait for a support level to be established and then you play off of that. And so I can look at this and say, all right, 895 is a support level. We pull back, we bounce off that level, and then we hold it. And so I make an, an entry at 899, and I sell half at 909. I always will be selling half when I'm making this kind of move. Why? Because again, if I'm late, I'm not going to be buying the top. I'm going to be protecting myself with a stop loss. Worst case, it's a small loss. So as soon as I sell half at 909, my break even is now 895. No, 880, 889 is now my break even. And so I put my stop under the low of consolidation. And if we see continuation, I've got a larger position size. I'm averaging up. And if we break support, I stop out and don't lose a dollar. And so that's what ended up happening. And granted, you know, it stopped me out and then we closed strong. My long-term swing position benefits. I'm happy about that. And I protect it against the position that I added because there will be a ton of new bag holders created on this move. There are going to be people that buy CGC and ACB and then sit through a 30% pullback and say, oh my gosh, what's going on? You bought the top. So we know that's going to come eventually. We know these names will pull back significantly, but not just yet. The music is still playing. It's a game of musical chairs. And so, you know, how do we do that on CGC? Well, CGC had a tightening range where we had... The high, low, lower high. Look at this support, 123. We hold it. And then we see a new high of the day. So I can then play off of 123 or 127 and use these levels to protect myself. Because again, when we drop eventually, when the top is hit, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's Thursday, I don't know. But when the top is hit, we will pull back 30% easily. And so you have to protect against that. Uh, resistance levels from here, a bit out the window. As I mentioned, CGC, two psychological. MSOS, I'm looking at 980 and 10 psychological is the next resistance levels. Low of today. Some of these names still have daily stair steps, which means a higher low every single day. AYR, uh, one of the lower cap names, daily stair step. If we don't break that pattern, we're not going to pull back. So every day, you can be using the low of the previous day as a key stop or a key support level to be keeping an eye on. So the fun's still going on in the sector, 
Again, I'm, I'm protective as a bull at this point. I'm still trading in both directions. Shorted TLRY today when we headed up right to daily resistance of 340 and I recognized a bearish pattern. And the bearish pattern was a five minute, it was actually on the two minute, but it was a rising wedge. Just shows a bit of bull exhaustion and knowing we are right under resistance and knowing traders like me are going to short resistance. As soon as we hit this new high, I shorted at 335 and then covered. I don't wanna give inaccurate information. So sell short 335, cover half real quick at 332. I can then put my stop over the high of the day risk-free. And then I covered the rest at 325. Just a nice little day trade. And again, a bit of a hedge type of mindset where, all right, if, if we're going to see weakness in the sector today, I've got a short. I'm not going to sell my MSOS long swing position. And so I can potentially continue to benefit in my account if the sector pulls back. It didn't. I lock in my gains on the short tried to go extra or increase my longs in MSOS, stop out break even. I'm gonna do the same exact mindset tomorrow. I'll look for some potential longs if we see continued strength. I'll look for some potential shorts if TLRY continues to struggle at daily resistance. Maybe TLRY is gonna play laggard and get a bull break of 340 and a leg up because it certainly was left behind today, but very agile, personally. And one more thing. MNMD, psychedelic name, stood out today for the bulls. We saw increasing volume. We knew we were going to be higher than Friday's volume because we had Friday's total volume in the first two hours of trading. So daily higher low is now set at 387, and bulls are trying to break 432 to follow through from the weekly higher low that was set. Key resistance will still be up at $5, but a little bit of an uptick in this name. CMPS is weaker. CMPS is potentially shaping up another longer term lower high to remain within this tightening range. So we're going to keep an eye out for that possibility. But obviously the spotlight remains on cannabis as long. I mean, the dollar volume today, CGC put up like $350 million of trading today. MSOS, $10 million. No, I mean, $100 million. TLRY, $280 million. I'm just very roughly guessing. They're close. Uh, it's a lot of dollar volume. It's way more than retail on CGC. You don't put up $350 million with retail. That is a retail-led move and a lot of other major players on it as well. Tesla. So Tesla was a nice setup for the short squeeze. We had an upgrade from Morgan Stanley. And it's a mini short squeeze. And again, it's just putting my mindset in that of a bear. I have my long swing position here whose stop held by a dollar and 29 cents, 27 cents, which was nice, but it was a four hour tightening range. And Friday we rejected from four hour resistance and had a weak day and we closed near the low. You look at the daily candle on Friday and it looks weak. And then we have this gap up and bulls keep full control. So I know looking at Friday's action, I could say, yeah, it makes sense that, you know, a bear would enter there rejecting from resistance, heading back down towards support. And then they get trapped. Anybody that shorted Tesla in the last week plus is quickly underwater with the gap up open. So the monthly higher low is set. The reason I entered daily oversold conditions on the gap down on a swing trade was looking for the possibility of a monthly higher low. And again, it's just, we can't predict things, but things often rhyme. And when I was talking about that setup, I've highlighted how did we set the last monthly higher low? Well, it was a gap down and daily oversold conditions. Literally the exact same setup. Could I say this is going to happen? No. I could say I like the probability of this setup. The risk to reward is favorable. And so I'm going to keep walking my stop loss up as it keeps going. The next resistance is 280, what? 280.93, then some gap fill. But I just love the fact that it was the exact same setup. Daily oversold, gap down open, monthly higher low. It's the same thing like oftentimes hourly oversold marks the daily higher low. Five minute oversold often marks the hourly higher low. Semiconductors, relative weakness remains. Daily bear flag confirmed. It didn't follow through significantly because the NASDAQ kept grinding higher all afternoon. But NVDA lead bear continues. I'm watching this potential rising wedge. If we're green tomorrow, I'll continue to watch this potential rising wedge. 
uptrend support, uptrend resistance. So relative weakness continues. It is still a weekly uptrend. And watching to see, can the NASDAQ bull stay strong? If, this, if the semiconductor weakness is going to follow through, the NASDAQ has to set the daily lower high and pull back. Healthcare got some bounce follow through, negating the daily bear flag. So that was helping the broader market a bit. The financial sector broke its three day sideways range bullish, but did see some profit taking. Is a daily lower high taking shape compared to 3480? If we break 3437, the answer will be yes. So that supports in play tomorrow. The energy sector sold off considerably as well today bearish engulfing candle while oil did not drop. I mean, oil struggling at $88, but this was a considerable amount more weakness in energy stocks than in energy commodities. So that stands out a bit. And it is coming off the all-time high, but straight into weekly consolidation, breaking the low of last week. Just a bit unusual, stands out a little bit. IWM, very weak as well. Tons of space for a daily lower high. Potential bear flag in play here. ARKK growth had strength today, benefiting from the Tesla move, but it hit new bounce highs. So highest level in a month plus in growth names, but that's not helping IWM as IWM is still weaker. IONQ, quantum computing name, trying for a cup and handle. Resistance, consolidation, double top, bull flag, and here we are trying to break out. So low cap name, high risk, high reward. We know the AI space has lost momentum. And we're seeing AI, the earnings drop, bounce is scouting a daily lower high. PLTR is hanging on, trying to get to its bounce highs, but certainly neither as strong as IONQ. Back up at the highs. Key resistance test tomorrow. I also made a long finally in VFS. I've mentioned it a couple times. The reason that got me interested was on the live stream this morning and saw fresh lows and then a V shape to the high of the day. So I said, all right, I'm scouting the five minute higher low from there. So I made an entry at just over 16. I sold 25% at 16.50. So my break even is now maybe 1580s. And from there, I'm giving the bulls a chance. I have a small swing position, small because volatility is high, but I'm looking for the daily stair step to break bull. First time we've closed higher than the open in two weeks. Have to break 17.05 tomorrow. And the only reason I'm swinging a small position is because I was able to sell partial profit, get nice and comfortable, keep a small position and give the bulls a chance tomorrow. CGC is still going wild here after hours. We just spiked up. Broke the high of the day, gave it right back. So it's going to be interesting tomorrow pre-market to see how we're shaping up in the cannabis sector. BCB trying to recover. Just be productive. Because again, we will top and drop hard. But it's possible that the short squeeze continues a little bit further. Nothing wrong with taking profit into strength. You're not going to nail the top. You're not going to nail the bottoms. Partial positions are the way to go. The dollar's daily consolidation, EMA 12 support test, anything above 102.93 will be a daily higher low. And with that, the metals are trying to bounce, still potential daily bear flags on gold, pretty much a double top with the high of Friday. Silver, daily bounce attempt, still weak there. Have to see weakness in the dollar for the metals to shift momentum. And right now, the dollar consolidation on the daily is still healthy overall. Already talked about the oil battle at 88 and natural gas trying to confirm the first little daily uptrend. It would just be a little dinky one, but it would be the first one in a long time. And then from there, we'll zoom out. If we do break 166, make that 266, we'll zoom out to the two-day time frame and then watch for the possibility that that then forms a tightening two-day range. My game plan for cannabis into tomorrow, not going to touch my swing position. I'll be watching. If TLRY rejects from 340, I will short it. Perhaps five-minute oversold. Let's see. If CGC gaps up, 
and drops real hard to five minute oversold, looking for a level to say that's either the low of the day and an hourly higher low, or I stop out, use that level to play off of. We'll take it from there. Hope you had a good day. Don't forget to do good things and keep those emotions in check. If you're feeling euphoric, or even if you're feeling FOMO in the cannabis space. Feel free to ask any questions. We'll see you soon. Do good things. You cannot beat a volunteer squash in a compost pile. I did all my squash too early this year. The bugs got them. And this one came out perfectly. Look at these tentacles. This plant has got to cover hundreds of feet. It's climbing up all this jewel weed. You got, like, that's a squash back in there. I don't know what it is. They look like spaghetti squash. I hope they are. Could be pumpkins. But just to show you how massive this thing is, I'm impressed.